Hello, this is Marauders here, and well, I need to calibrate my up mini to, uh, mini's platform today. So I thought I record a video to share a little tip on how I go about doing my calibration. Now, if you are any, if you are, if you own a up 3D printer, you know that this is your platform calibration screen. So first, you set the main nozzle height. And then you set the deviation of the point of the platform to the nozzle height. So basically, with these numbers, they are able. You are able to tell the printer that your platform is slightly, it's not fully level or throughout all the corners. So telling it these corner, telling it these numbers would allow the printer to print uh, the. I suppose the logic is that it allows the printer to print a base to offset any of the minor height differences. Now, if you're when we when we are calibrating the platform, we are told that that for for the 0.1 difference, 0 0.1 thickness is basically the thickness of a piece of paper. So we're supposed to stick a sheet of piece of paper into the into the printer. In, in between the nozzle and the on nozzle and the platform so that we can know how how far how far the difference is between the nozzle and the platform but the thing is what I did notice was that if you look in the drop down boxes we can see that there are actually many values so it's, it's between 0 millimeters to 1 millimeter but Whenever someone says how to do it, they always say, yeah, just find 0 0.1 and find 0 0.1, slot a piece of paper in between the nozzle and the platform. If, it's, if the paper moves freely, then it's about 0 0.1. If the, if the paper is stuck, then there's no gap. If the paper is a bit tight, then, then it could be 0 0.1 also. But the thing that I realized is it's very hard to get nice zero zero point one value for the whole platform and we have a whole range of values here so why can't we just use this instead and that got me thinking so since zero point one is the thickness of a piece of paper that will mean that if I wanted to calibrate the platform for different thicknesses what I could do is I could take this piece of paper and now I'm going to just I'm going to make a fan so I'm going to fold it in half okay and I'm going to half it again Now we want a sort of zigzagging pattern, so just let's just crease it first. We actually want a zigzag fan like pattern, so we just crease it first. So now it's two halves, and I can actually make another set of halves. Okay, so now I basically folded the paper into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight quadrants. So with this, we now, after we crease it, we just fold it into a fan.
Okay, so now, so now we have a fan. Okay, so we have a fan with eight segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight segments. Now, what we're gonna do now is, if what we're gonna do now here is that we're gonna start cutting off one level by level, a square, level by level. Yeah, I know it's gonna be a bit difficult because I'm actually strapping the camera to my head. So first I'm gonna cut one level. Okay. Then I'm going to cut two levels and I think I actually done it wrong. Hang on a moment. Uh, okay, I actually done it wrong. So we'll start from the other side. So you start from the you start from the we're gonna stack it up like this. So what we're gonna do is, if I am not mistaken, this is what we call what they call a feeler gauge. So we're gonna build up levels of thickness up. So first we're gonna start off with the base, which is one piece. So so therefore we're gonna cut off everything here so that we left one piece here. So I just chop it off. Good to have nice sharp scissors okay and then we'll offset so the next layer would have would have two pieces of paper like this one and two so we just cut off everything here And then next one we'll have the third layer, so one, two, three. And so on. So the next one is four. And the next one is five. Now you don't have to be very exact about the sizes. Eventually you you will you we just need to get a general thickness guide so it doesn't have, need to be very exact. The main problem is that since I'm just doing this on the fly, I'm not calculating or anything. The if it's too thick, you might not be able to use the deeper ones for the for the deeper corners of the printer. I'll show you what I mean later. So let me just continue on cutting away this thing. Okay, so now we have a very primitive feeler gauge. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a, it looks like a accordion. Uh, forget about this part. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna calibrate like normal. But so at the point when we first start doing it, if we can insert the this tip here into underneath the nozzle. 
and it's slightly tight, then it means that then it means that the nozzle is 0, 0 0.1 millimeters from the platform. But if it's if it moves extremely if it moves freely between the nozzle and the platform, that means the nozzle is higher than 0 0.1. Then we can then insert the other tip into the we can in start inserting it deeper until we find one where it where it is where the it moves snugly but it's not it's not tight that means the spring is not pushing the bottom platform up towards the nozzle so with this we can theoretically have a we have a wider range of figuring out what is the difference between the not the height difference between the nozzle and the and the platform so with this you don't have to just keep thinking about hmm, I, I should always look for a position where my nozzle is between 0 and 0 0.1 height of the platform and we can you can basically you should be able to find it and calibrate it more easily and uh, more effectively with and less time consuming it works uh, quite work quite well for me. Uh, again, 3D printing is all about experience and uh, and time. So I hope this tip helps you as well as it helped me. So 0 0.1 goes in easily. 0 0.2 is already feeling a bit tight, so I guess it's 0 0.2. Zero point one is free again. Zero point two is tight. say this is a zero so I recommend that you actually turn on the no you obviously should turn on the nozzle light when you're doing calibration so you can see whether there's any gap between the nozzle and the platform so you don't miss the level zeros the reason I am not doing it when I when I'm recording this is of course when the light is on, you can't actually see the nozzle. The camera doesn't record. It's hard to, for the camera to record the nozzle properly. So that's a zero. That's also good enough to be a zero. Um, or it could be 0 0.1. Hmm. Okay, I'm just call those as zeros. Okay, this is zero point one. The paper first level goes in, but it's a bit tight. Doesn't go in at all. Yeah, doesn't go in at all. We'll consider as zero. This is another zero. Okay. Guess I have it.